Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews. Today we're going to do some more of these PNSL minis. We are starting to come to the end of the line. I think we've only got probably like five more sets of these to review. So, I mean, I guess we're kind of not really at the end of the line, but we're getting there. It's the first time I've seen this box quite so empty. So we are making some good progress. And as you can see today, we will be reviewing lots of feathers. We've got Jonas the Archaeopteryx, Yo-Yo the Confucio Soreness, and Yi Yi the Yi, I guess would be how you'd say it. I'm not actually positive how you pronounce that one. I know that is Chinese, but uh, I don't know Chinese, and I don't really know exactly how you pronounce it, so... I'm looking at you, Acrosorotaurus S, or however you say your name to correct me because I don't know exactly again how you say the name of that dinosaur. As you can see, as always, we get a nice little image there of the background, the habitat that these animals lived in. Very, very cool. Of course, it didn't, uh, with Archaeopteryx, it didn't just live in the sky, but that is still really cool. Very nice looking uh, artwork there in the background so let's go ahead and get them out of the package and get a better look. So now we've got them all out of the package we can take a nice look here at the booklets themselves with the Archaeopteryx you can see we've got a very cool image of some clouds and then an insanely awesome image of the Archaeopteryx itself inside. As always the artwork in these booklets is just mind-bogglingly beautiful with the Confuciosaurus you can see a nice image of a forested area with a tree that's been downed and then the beautiful image of the animal itself a very cool prehistoric bird and then with Yi Yi the again I don't know for sure if it is Yi or how you say it exactly you've got a nice image again of a forested area with a tree and then a super cool image of these two here uh, maybe arguing it looks like or maybe I'm not really sure but uh, it looks very cool, and uh, it looks to be maybe a male and a female here together. I'm not positive, but it looks really awesome, beautiful artwork. And this is actually, I believe, they term this as a bat-winged bird or something, or a bat-winged dinosaur, something along those lines. And you can really see why, just here in that image, just how bat-like those wings look. So, very cool, very interesting species this is. But without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at the figures themselves. So starting with the Archaeopteryx, you can see that the head sculpt is really, really nicely sculpted as far as the featheration goes. There is just beautiful featheration all over the place. I love that coloration around the eye. I think that looks very nice, very striking. You can see the eye itself is painted very nicely, very uh, just basically a black coloration, but it's very nicely done. And that white ring that ends in kind of a stripe here or like a uh, triangle looks really really cool and makes the entire head just look really striking the beak itself you can see is sculpted beautifully you can actually see the mouth and everything in there so very nicely done and then it kind of leads to a uh, blackish coloration here in the back of the head and then you've also got this brownish coloration up here on the top of the head and it's actually more like a gold almost but it looks very, very nice. As you lead down the neck, again, that featheration looks really nicely sculpted, impressively nice, considering the size of the figure, as this figure is super small. And then you come down here into the wing, and as you lead out the wing, look how nicely sculpted that featheration is, and really how nicely painted it is. It's not too much as far as different coloration, but you can see it starts up here as this like very light blue. And then as you lead down, there's a beautiful airbrushing that's been done with a blackish coloration or a dark brown. And then just along the edge, it's kind of a lighter blue and it really makes it just pop, it makes it look so striking. I think they've done an incredible job on the way they went about painting the Archaeopteryx's wings and up here you can see the uh, claws and everything and the fingers themselves are uh, painted basically that same goldish type of color that's up here on the top of the head. Then you start to lead down the back you can see the uh, feathers are very nicely sculpted the whole way out. You have kind of a dark brown here as the wing leads to the tail feathers and uh, down into the leg. You see all the feathers there are really nicely sculpted as well. And then here is one of the two feet, which is also that same goldish brown type of a color that uh, you see on the hands and the top of the head. And then you come up here into the nice long tail here. You 
You can see all the very nicely sculpted and painted tail feathers, beautifully airbrushed with a dark brown and then this blue and there's almost like a light gray here or like sort of a whitish at the end on the tip there. Kind of gives it a nice striking look and really grabs your attention in that area. Take a look at this side and the head sculpt and everything looks beautiful just like the previous side. Coming down, beautiful feathering down into the neck and then also down here into the wing. The wing on this side is in exactly the same position as it is on the opposing side but looks just as good. That beautiful brown airbrush that has been taken to the wing here making it look very realistic. And then you come back here again into the uh, leg area those big feathers, those big scruffy kind of feathers sticking out of the back of the leg and the leg is actually lifted up here kind of uh, into the wing a little bit as it seems to be taking a step or running along maybe it's also that same goldish color it's really quite nicely sculpted looks very good you can even see the dew claw and everything looking again here actually at the wing just look how nicely sculpted the detail of the feathers actually is it's really really impressive for something so small and then again we lead out that nice long tail it looks very good even the detail on the underside the sculpting and everything looks really really nice and it's basically just a whitish coloration but then it turns back into this grayish blue as we get to the underneath of the Archaeopteryx itself so a really beautiful looking Archaeopteryx then we've got the Confucius Soreness and uh, also very very nice looking I like that bluish color here on the beak really gives it a, a nice look here a nice appearance on the face and kind of sets it off to uh, really kind of look a little bit flashy just straight away that that blue really pulls your attention to the face area and I really quite like that The beak appears to be sculpted quite nicely you can see the uh, mouth and everything even the feathers under the neck here really look quite nice the eye is quite large it's a yellow coloration and then you've got a black pupil, beautiful head crest up here on the top, that's like an orangey brown type color, and then it leads down into almost a burnt umber type brown on the top of the head, and the feathering looks to be sculpted really nicely. You start to run down the back here, again those feathers look great, they really do, and you've got all sorts of variations of brown and everything throughout the entire, uh, honestly the entire body sculpt, but really right here in the back you could just see so many different variations of brown making it look very realistic in my opinion and then again as we run out the wing look how incredibly nice the actual flight feathers all over the place are sculpted there's just so much detail included in the wings and the feathers themselves they just honestly look beautiful and I really like the way that they've applied the paint again with an airbrush I would imagine but uh, I like that they have like a light brown and then a dark brown and then a light brown and a dark brown and then a uh, little bit of a lighter brown and then it turns into like a grayish coloration really making it look very very realistic and I think that it just overall has a super flashy type of a look but in a very realistic way this is without question a coloration that I could definitely see this being when it was alive and you can see the fingers sticking up here on the top part of the hand if we actually go to the underside there you go you can actually see the entire hand claws and everything looks really quite nice and I like the feathering on the underside as well I think that also looks really good there isn't too much as far as coloration on the bottom here but there is a little bit of an airbrushing that's been done here and honestly a lot of the time birds on their undersides would have a lightish coloration like this so it really does look quite realistic and again that sculpting of the feathers and the detail within the feathers is impressive beyond belief. Really, really nicely done. And you lead down into the feet, and the feet are uh, slightly darker. They're like a, almost a uh, pavement gray type coloration. But they are sculpted really nicely. And same goes for the underside of those big long tail feathers. It's a similar, almost a blackish coloration. And then if we flip it over, we can see the nice tail feathers here. And then it leads to those two very long tail feathers that are really nicely sculpted and it ends up here with two white dots looks very cool very flashy and again very natural looking honestly I think the overall appearance of this looks super cool and this would be very neat to add into a collection if you could actually have it maybe soaring and maybe tie like a string to it or something from your ceiling or maybe even just put it on some kind of a little base that would make it appear as though it's flying it would look super cool in any collection and then finally we've got the Yi, or I imagine that's how you say it. Again, I'm not really too sure. Starting up here at the head sculpt, you can see it looks really quite nice. It's a dark coloration for the beak. 
and then we recede to the head, turns into a yellow, but there is also a, uh, like a darker yellow that's kind of mixed in, again giving it some very nice shading and uh, tones of coloration that make it look quite realistic. The eye is a nice blackish coloration, appears to have a little bit of a gloss to it, really making it look quite realistic. And then we lead down into the back, really nice feathering all over this as well. And it's primarily just that yellow color, but there is like kind of uh, lighter yellows that have been added in, again to make it just have some kind of skin tone and different coloration throughout the body. And then we lead out to those very bat-like wings that are honestly quite creepy looking. Nicely done detail as far as they go. You can see they do look really quite nice. There's actually some uh, green striping a little bit that's been put into this wing. I'm not sure why it's not on this wing over here, but I think that could have given it a pretty flashy look if you would have had it all over. I don't know if maybe mine was just uh, mistakenly given these, or maybe this wing was just mistakenly not given it. I'm not sure, but again, I think that could have definitely given it a little bit of a flashy look. And uh, it already looks quite flashy enough, to be honest. The underside also looks really cool. That's such a, a very neat visual. This uh, bat-like creature just flying at your face. Honestly, this uh, whole thing is kind of creepy looking, and I really quite like it because of that. The detail on the underside of these wings actually is really, really nice. Even the hands are quite beautifully sculpted. Nicely done claws up there. Really beautiful work. And then it leads down to a lighter yellow very uh, gradually and naturally down to that lighter yellow and then the wings themselves are like a dark black a very evil like black and then the darker yellow for the arms themselves really really nicely done as far as the sculpting of the small feathers go and this one is on a base you can see it's just probably in a forested area as it's stepping off of a log I think that looks really really nice the base itself is nicely painted there's a beautiful wash that's been included to really make it look quite realistic. You can see there are all sorts of stones and everything included on the base. And you can see the feet themselves also look really, really nice with the way they've been sculpted. The nails themselves are really quite nicely defined on the sculpting of the feet. Beautiful work there. And then we come down into these uh, very strange and signature tail feathers that look really quite cool. And they are almost a neon yellow that leads to a dark green setting the whole thing off for such a beautiful flashy look something that really grabs your attention when you look at it even the underside of the feathers is that nice dark green and they are also really quite beautifully sculpted so this animal is really really striking and so interesting looking to me uh, something I'm definitely gonna have to look into because I really am quite interested in this species but uh, overall, this model of it is a beautiful rendition and really quite awesome. As far as the size goes on the Archaeopteryx, from the tail to the tip of the wings, you're looking at about three and three quarter inches or about nine and a half centimeters. And for a height, actually the highest point would probably be the tail. So you're looking at about two inches or about five centimeters. And for the Confucius Soreness, from the tail feathers to the head, you're looking at about three and a quarter inches or around eight, a little over eight, almost eight and a half centimeters. And on a wingspan, about three and a quarter inches or about eight and a half centimeters. Strange how that one measured out. And for the Yi, for a length, you're looking at about three inches or about eight centimeters. And a wingspan of about three inches or eight centimeters. Again, very strange. And for a height, you're looking at about an inch and a half, maybe close to two inches or about four and a half centimeters. For a size comparison, there is our buddy the green Papo Rex with all of his feathered relatives. And you can see that they are all really quite small. But then again, they should be really quite small compared to a Tyrannosaurus Rex. However, they are quite obviously not to scale. But again, giving you a pretty good idea of how small and insanely detailed these minifigures are next to this Papo Rex. So all three of these minifigures are really quite awesome. Again, we go ahead and find some more obscure species that are most likely never going to get a figure from anybody else. And luckily for us, PNSO does exist to give us such figures like the Confucius Soreness. I could not possibly see that ever getting a figure from anybody else. I could be wrong and I would love to be wrong, but I just don't really see it happening. And then you've got the Yi, which is just a super cool and very interesting looking creature. And again, getting a figure, it's super obscure, something you wouldn't expect to get one. 
but luckily PNSO has graced us with a minifigure of said species. And then you've got the Archaeopteryx, which is probably one of the most popular as far as bird-like dinosaurs go. But honestly, this is a really beautiful rendition of the Archaeopteryx, and although it is popular, it is still really quite cool regardless to get a PNSO Archaeopteryx. So three beautifully, very highly detailed figures. I love seeing these figures that are so small, but are covered in feathers because it's really quite interesting to me to see how well PNSO does as far as sculpting the detail on the feathers as they are really so small. And uh, again, they continue to impress me because somehow they pull it off and they pull it off in such a beautiful, natural way that they really are just absolute beautiful works of art. Again, the paint applied all looks very natural. They all potentially look real as far as the coloration. Things I could definitely see them being as uh, even this one with the neon type colors, there are some very, very flashy tropical birds that I could definitely see having similar coloration. So again, all three look really nice as far as the coloration. Again, the paint applied looks very naturally done. It looks like body color and not paint. So PNSO, another round of applause for three more beautiful minifigures, always impressing me as far as these minifigures go and just how nice they actually pull them off. Three absolute beauties here. So if you do want to buy any of these, I will link you to each and every one in the description. So check the description, buy all, or just whatever one you like. Or you can also buy the entire box set of all 48 figures, as I will include a link to that as well. So go ahead and buy yourself some awesome feathered minis. And please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching.